Hi everyone, welcome back. It's my AK Swedish Whiskey Girl. Today I am in a lovely room. This is exactly what I wish my living room looked like. We are at Cask 88 in the Whiskey Library, it's called, isn't it? And I have a guest, Kat. Hello. Hi Kat, how are Hi. you? I'm doing very good. Yes, it's, uh, it's nice to be in the Whiskey Library. I don't often get to come here, although a little chilly. Wonderful. I'm very thrilled to have seen it and you'll get to see some little snippets in this video as well. But we are going to talk about Cask 88, we're going to talk a bit about Cat and we're going to try some whiskey, which will be very exciting. Me and Cat actually know each other because we used to work together at the Scotch Whiskey Experience, but I thought I'd let you introduce yourself. Who are you and what do you do for Cask 88? So I am Cat, a big whiskey fan. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff for Cask 88, so I do the social media, I help out with the YouTube series, which everyone should go and watch. Um, yeah, and uh, it's a bit all hands on deck here because it's a bit of a smaller company, so yeah, a little bit. Good. Always busy then. Always busy, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I mean, the YouTube series are brilliant. That's kind of how I got in, like, into knowing more about Cask 88. It's based in central Edinburgh, but you can almost see the castle from here. But it's, yeah, it's not something I've really interacted with a lot. And we're going to talk more about Cask 88, but before we do, we'll talk a little bit more about you. Absolutely. So how Anytime. did you get into whiskey? Because you weren't always a big whiskey fan. You weren't born and you were like, love whiskey. No, and I don't have that, you know, the stories people have where their grandparents made yeah. them drink whiskey. That's so are you not... from Scotland? So yes, I am from Glasgow. Nice. Um, the other big city, <laughs> excellent city. You don't but sound very Glaswegian. No, I don't sound very Glaswegian. I spent too long on the, on the East Coast. <laughs> on the wrong coast. On the wrong coast. The I right can coast. never go back. <laughs> I can never go back, they won't accept me anymore. Um, yeah, from Glasgow, I didn't have that grandparent whiskey experience. I always thought of whiskey as being a bit like other and for posh folk, you know, like different. Um, but when I started university, that was my university job. So actually, I applied for the job at the whiskey experience before I'd even started my course because it just seemed like a cool and interesting job yeah. and then the first day of the interview I don't know if you remember they like give you a dram yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, this is funny because did you get your dram before the interview yeah or after before I'm me too and I thought it was a trick I was like <laughs> am I supposed to accept it yeah yeah you're like is this like because you do the tour at the whiskey experience and then you get a dram yeah and then you do the interview so it's like because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I accepted it. I accepted it too, yeah. and then I made my eyes water, and oh. I was trying to pretend <laughs> that everything Try was fine. Try your way fine. through the interview. Yeah, but um, because it's so engaging to work there, they, they would train you up and they teach you all about it. Yeah, you definitely. very quickly become a big fan and really into it. Do you remember if it took a long time for you to start liking it? Or? I remember wet eyes for like the first <laughs> few months. But you were consistent, consistent, you kept going in Yeah, I did, yeah. I did. You didn't go give up. No, I, I didn't no. give up. It wasn't hard, like it was tasty, but I remember it was like overwhelming. Lovely. Well, do you have any advice to someone who might not like whiskey yet, but wants to go in, get into it? I think it's the stories, right? Like it's learning about the distilleries and, and how they came to make whiskey because yeah. it's actually quite a long process. Where the flavor comes from, Where the who makes from. it, and yeah. Yeah, all that jazz. <laughs> all that jazz. Yeah. Do you have a favourite style of whiskey or a specific whiskey or a region or what is it Scotch right or now? is it international? Is it? Um, so, ah, I know what I'm into right now. Obviously it changes um, depending on like the weather and also your own personal taste sort of develops. But at the moment I have been trying out slightly older whiskies, like okay. 18 year old whiskies, like it's kind of comparing them to see how much the maturation, the types of maturation have affected the flavours. Mm -hmm. So you know like Glendronach 18 is very rich, but then yeah. Glenfiddich 18 has a kind of similar maturation. This is really nerdy all of a sudden, but... Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's someone out there watching who's super nerdy and I like getting nerdy, yeah. so it's, it's good to hear. But Glenfiddich 18, it's much more like soft, subtle, yeah, it's interesting, so I've been, that's what I've been doing. So you have an 18 year old for every mood. I know, and that out. sounds so fancy, <laughs> <laughs> like, not what I used to be like, because I used to be more interested in slightly younger ones, because I thought they were more exciting. Do you have but, a favourite um, cast type, or? Uh, it used to be sherry finished sure. whiskies, then it was port finished whiskies for a while, I think nice. now I don't really have a favourite cast type of nice. trying all of it. And things. is it primarily Scotch you drink, or bourbon, or international whiskies? I think it's primarily Scotch. I do. It's have... easy to get a hold of Scotch in Scotland. Easier. <laughs> and also if you work in whiskey, people people give you things, or they like, 
Yeah, you of course. You want to try it out so you can talk to your friend mm -hmm. who works at Glenfiddich about Glenfiddich. And I'm sure you can get some fancy whiskeys like the one we have here and going to try soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think these whiskeys sometimes are too fancy even for the likes of me. But uh, that's actually exciting that we're going to get to try this today, actually. Yeah. And we're going to chat a little bit more about whiskey when we come to that. But of course we have to talk about what, what cast cast Yeah, what is Cascade? How come they have such a fancy room? Where's the name coming from? What yeah. do they do? Yeah. Well, um, as the name suggests, I can break it down actually. Yeah. Cask 88. Cask, because we're all about casks. Yeah. Um, this room is full of bottles, so it's slightly confusing. Uh, and a few casks in that corner. Actually, that's true. There are some casks in the corner of the room. <laughs> um, but yeah, Cask 88, most of deals in casks. They have access to lots of interesting casks. And so basically, if you're a person who wants to purchase a cask, you would talk to us and we would arrange for you find the perfect one for you mm -hmm. and that also means that if you want to do your own independent like, independent bottling you can also do that via cask 88 and that is why we have the house of the in-house designers because nice. they'll help you uh, design your own label and you get to put your own stamp on it and things and um, there was a recent one it was golden drops of a danish company okay uh they met you on instagram because they were like tagging us. Maybe you haven't. Um, but they were really proud of the design that they got organised. Oh, wonderful. Yes. So yeah, and the, so that's the cast part. So basically cast brokers. Cast brokers. And yeah. cast designers. Yeah. yeah. Or independent <laughs> designers. Oh. We don't design our own cast. And uh, someone dropping something. Um, Hopefully not a bottle. No. Sounds like everything's okay. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so that's the cast part. And the 88 part is because it is a lucky number in Asia and the owner of this company he's not from Asia but his wife is oh, okay. so it's kind of a special number for them and the homage yeah it's like an homage yeah nice well that sounds lovely and yeah so independent bottler cast brokers and now taking over YouTube <laughs> yes and now <laughs> you whiskey media stars lovely <laughs> well dream. how did the YouTube idea come around I think it was the right at the beginning of the first lockdown. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of creative energy at Cascade Nice. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people who work here, you know, there's the designers, um, there's people who are really interested in like writing and media and poetry. I think it's quite obvious um, from what we put out. And so I think they just saw this as an opportunity to to do something fun. fun. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a bit quirky and fun, I would it's say. It's pretty quirky, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam gets away with a lot when he writes it, and then we just go with it. And we watch quite a lot of them, and something we've noticed, which I don't know if we've just watched too many of them, <laughs> there's a figurine in them that always moves. That is on purpose. Sam will be I so pleased so. to that. <laughs> I'm also going to say, if you do watch it, keep an eye out for this, because I feel like it's a little bit of a hidden gem for people that are a curring audience. Yeah. Because every time we watch it, we're like, He's there! He wasn't there last time! <laughs> but yeah, I can't fun. believe you noticed this. That was exactly what Sam wanted. It's, uh, it's an Easter egg. It's, it's an Easter figurine. egg. Yeah. Lovely. But we're glad to hear that. But we are going to move on to the tasting. I'll pour some drums. Do you want to tell us about this? Yeah, so this is the. Oh, no? <laughs> yeah, so this is the latest in the folklore series. It's number five, um, which is getting towards the end of the series collection. I'm going to save um, a little for Cody because he'll Aww. be sad if he doesn't get any. That's Sorry, really I interrupted sweet. you. No, yeah. Um, quite fancy liquid, quite limited liquid, uh, not something you can get your hands on easily, which is the theme of the folklore. It's always like slightly older casts or slightly more rare casts. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited that you're allowing me to try your sample <laughs> with you because I haven't been able to try. Oh, of course, this is for sharing. Yeah, it? yeah. So it's a single malt. It's aged 28 years. It's distilled at Bowmore Distillery, and it's at 53.2% ABV. Mm-hmm. Sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. Did you say what the cast type was? Sorry. The cast is ex bourbon cast. Ex bourbon. So it's like your classic, something a bit more subtle to let the other flavors come through, like the. Lovely. And with the flavors. folklore series, which this is a part of, is it the third or the fourth? This is the fifth. The fifth? Oh, I can't count. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared, I'm sure you can't count. <laughs> but you've done some before, and I think it's been really fun to see what you're doing on social media for it, because you've done the little riddles. Yes. I got really invested in one of them, and had to research all Scottish folklore to try and figure out what the clues were going towards, which was a lot of fun. And yeah. You do have to put in the time and effort into the research, because Sam goes tricky. for some pretty niche folklore yeah. characters yeah it's um, fun no it's scottish folklore is a really interesting part of like scottish culture and it's just really fun getting to like embody the characters through whiskey like make the connections yeah um and because we know we have quite an international audience 
it's really fun like sharing those stories with them. Yeah. I mean, I had no idea about some of these, so yeah. it's definitely interesting. Combining yeah. the Scottish folklore education with whiskey. Yeah. It's good. And it's also a bit creative. Yeah, let's have a nose then. Okay. I'm already started because I just can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> it has this kind of coastal vibe. It actually has more smoke than I was expecting from a 28 I was just thinking that. So I think that's why the, the cask is just an ex-barbic cask. So yeah. that you maybe could retain that smoky flavour. And it does. It literally does have a smoky note. Yeah, but it's quite light and quite woody, I would say. But it might be that kind of Bowmore character. Because I always associate Bowmore with being quite woody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For some reason, obviously that's not the new me because that's not fudged wood, but yeah. it's kind of drying. I don't know, it's just what I tend to find it's, on it. It's definitely no ashy, smoky Laphroaig. It's definitely more of a sophisticated smoke, yeah. generally. It's like a forest smoke. Oh, don't want to say forest fire. Don't want to say forest fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's if you like have fire. cut down a tree and you have fresh wood that you then make a fire out of. Yes. Obviously, being from the countryside in Sweden, we know all about this because we have to cut wood every summer to stock up for the winter because that's what keeps our house warm. Oh my god, right, yeah. <laughs> so if you have this kind of dry wood and then you and you know it's quite fresh and then you can use it and that's the kind of smoky it reminds me of. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Was a, a little bit um, like coastal oily grassy almost? Yeah. But quite fruity. <laughs> it's like fruity grassy somehow. I'm trying to work out which fruit it is. Same. I was thinking pineapple, but it's like oilier. I or saltier. I'm going through the same thought process. Is it like a candied pineapple? Maybe. Maybe like a ginger pineapple. Not as in like a pineapple that is ginger, but like a ginger <laughs> and pineapple. <laughs> Imagine like a pineapple with a ginger wig on. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what popped up in my head. <laughs> Okay, you could say you could say candied ginger and candied pineapple. Yeah, I mean, should we have a taste? Yeah, absolutely. Slange. 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 It definitely has a kind of forest wood smoke on the palate as well. It a does. lot more than you would expect from a twenty-eight-year-old. A lot more than you expect from a twenty-eight-year-old. But nice, it's quite elegant. That smoke. is really nice. That is really elegant. It does have that like candied sweetness plus smoke to it. Yeah, it's, it's quite sweet, but not overly sweet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's definitely like a fruit spice sweetness and not like a sugary sweetness, I'd say. Interesting. There's a lot going on. It is a lot going on. <laughs> and the finish is quite long due to that smoke yeah. still being in it. But I also think the fruitiness, you can kind of tell that this is uh, a fair amount older than maybe like core range releases yeah, yeah. that people tend to drink because it has this kind of golden tone to the fruitiness. This is what I always describe it as, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it just has this kind of... Definitely a depth of flavour. Yeah, if you had a fruit bowl mm -hmm. and then one of these fruits was the fruit that I'm describing in this, it had like a, a glow about it. Oh, Like okay. an angelic glow. Yeah. Golden. Yeah. <laughs> That's I've heard um, people describe it as the older the whiskey, like the more mature the fruit, so it's like slightly overripe, but yeah, and that, that makes sense. More exciting and like it's got musty notes, but it's got extra sweet notes. But that's a good way of describing it. Not sharp, it. soft. Yeah, and I think that definitely applies here. Yeah, definitely. I'm just I trying can't to believe how smoky that is. I know. Twenty year old. <laughs> it is because obviously, if you have an older whiskey that is smoky, the longer you mature it, the cask can overtake the smoke, so you get more casking points the smoke kind of subdues over time. It's the same if you leave a dram out and it's smoky. In the morning you can almost not get the smoke anymore because it's yeah. just kind of evaporated but it's yeah quite smoky. I mean you could definitely tell that the smoke is like the main character in on the palette. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it like? It's like yes. Sometimes they're hard to pinpoint. Sweden. You've got that fire <laughs> going made of the fresh cut trees. And you're eating <laughs> some dried ginger? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it does have a ginger note for me. Mm hmm Yeah, I think you're right. It almost makes me think of a whiskey ginger. Yeah. Which is just ginger ale and whiskey in it. Yeah. And then it has a, quite a big fruitiness, and that's where the sweetness comes from. And then that woody, dry woodiness. The finish is quite dry. Probably because... Yeah, but I still feel like you have the memory of the fruits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And quite long. 
and quite warming. What do you think about the ABV? Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's the higher ABV for sure is warming the whole of your palate and perhaps your throat a little bit. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> it's quite cold in here as well. It's yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, not undrinkable at 53 at all. No. I think it's quite pleasant. Should we add water? And we're back with the water. So, should we add a few drops? Yes, you go first. <laughs> I feel like this is the pressure. I'm so bad at adding a few drops of water. So I never know how much to add. Well, you know what they say, you can always add more in, but you can't take it out. True. That looked like a perfect amount though. Thanks. Just a little bit of... Um... Yeah, not too much, hopefully. Oh, it came super sweet. For oh, me. it's tropical fruit now. It's it like is tropical fruit now. Pomegranate and papaya. A little bit of grapefruit, I think. Yeah. Because it has this kind of citrus note, but you know when you rub the peel of a grapefruit, it's a little bit like bitter. Mm -hmm. A little bit like that. Very fresh. I think if someone handed me this dram, I would not know that it was anything peaty about it. No. No, not on the nose. There's still some smokiness on the palette for me, but it's definitely now taking a step back. <sighs> this annoys me because it's like something. It's almost like a kind of chemical candy notes. Mm -hmm. Also turned a little bit more charcoal in there for me. Yeah, I get that. It's um, gone even drier. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, but still quite sweet, quite fruity. I think people that want an older whiskey with a little bit of spice to it, a little bit of woody character, but still retaining the smoke would enjoy this. If yeah. you're looking for those older islas that tend to have like a lot of a uh, golden fruitiness that's just exploding, this has more layers than that, I'd say. Just like a little bit more of a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of this. You can kind of explore it a little bit further, especially with adding the water. But yeah, lovely whiskey. A very mercurial dram. Okay. Merc mercurial? mercurial like it's okay. very changeable it it's really funny every time i spend time with cat i learn new words <laughs> what was the one i learned early earlier zany uh, zany yes <laughs> we're talking about eurovision being zany zany yeah <laughs> brilliant and this is quite a mercurial drop yeah i think uh older whiskeys sometimes are just very much the cast that they have been matured in yeah. but this has retained its original spirit flavor through it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which is pretty interesting. Lovely drum. I'm sure we'll sit here and drum for a bit longer, but yeah. we're gonna say goodbye to everyone. So, uh, unfortunately, that video cut out slightly early, um, so we missed the part where Kat said that. Feel free to check out the YouTube video, and of course, if you're curious about the folklore series, that's on their website as well. I mean, YouTube series are just, if you like a bit of quirky fun, look at them and remember to check out for that figurine as well. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have, please consider leaving a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava, Scott.